Hi, I'm Emily, and I'm a level one chef. Hi, I'm Daniel, and I'm a level two chef. Hi, I'm Frank. I'm a chef instructor at the Institute of Culinary Education, and I've been a chef for 24 years. I will eat lamb pretty much any way that I can get it. In this case, I'm gonna be using the lamb shoulder chop, which is a cut that I can get at my local grocer. I am going to marinate my lamb chops so they soak up all this nice, delicious flavor. And I'm gonna serve them with a peanut sauce, which is super delicious and I'm very excited to do it. Today we're making the crown roast of lamb. And this is one of those dishes that has tons of wow factor. If you want people to think that you're on my level, make a crown roast of lamb. The great thing about the lamb shoulder chop is that as well as being a little bit more affordable because it's less in demand. It's a little cheaper, they have good flavor, and they're super fatty and delicious. I don't really like a lot of fat in my meat when I cook it. Just, you know, the whole mouthfeel thing. It's a little weird. These are lamb loin chops. I think that they are by far the best lamb you can get out there. And they kind of look like mini T-bone steaks. A lot of protein in there. So here I have two racks of American lamb. American lamb tends to be a little larger eye or a little larger loin. This is the lamb ribs and this is the loin. You'll also notice on this there's a little like blue or purple mark. It tells you the grade of the lamb and the USD will grade all lamb. It's like made with vegetable dye. It's not really gonna hurt you if you eat it. This cut is bigger because you'll usually see like the rib of the lamb is like a very popular cut, but this is the shoulder. That's what cut of meat I'm using. Let's get started with my marinade. If you don't marinate your meat, I kind of feel like you're doing it wrong, personally. Don't come after me. I feel like it locks in a bunch of extra flavors into the meat the meat wouldn't already have. And this is one that I've found that works pretty well. Most of the time when you get lamb from the butcher, it's gonna be cleaned more than this, right? This rack of lamb needs some preparation. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to French the bones. I do not know what Frenching the bone means. But if it's not kissing, I have no clue. Basically what Frenching the, the bones means are we're gonna clean the bones so that when you grab a chop, you can hold it and you can eat it without getting your fingers dirty. Like the little lamb lollipop. Boom, facts. And the first thing we need to do is take off this fat cap. Basically this will pull right off, right? And then you take this little shoulder blade piece out on the back side of this lamb is a very chewy piece of tendon that you want to clean off. There's a line of fat here right above the, the eye. I'm gonna cut, make an incision there. I'm gonna draw my knife across and then I'm gonna pull my knife across the back. Now I will take my knife, go down to that line and kind of just make an incision on both sides. But we really just wanna make sure that we can get that twine really close into the bone. So that's what we have, lines, Everything's opened up. Fresh mint here. I think it just adds like a light herbaceous note. Next, I'm going to add uh, some garlic. garlic and jalapeno. Garlic is important, not just for lamb, but for life. It complements it. It's like, hey lamb, you look good today. And lamb's like, oh, thanks, that's really nice of you. Lovely. And I think with the marinade like this, uh, that has a little bit of a heat to it, a little bit of a spice, it'll actually go really well with the sauce. And I ultimately want like about two tablespoons or even a little bit more of fresh rosemary. Rosemary can be like a little tough in your mouth, so I find just chopping it up a little helps you not get a mouthful of twigs. So we take the string, we're just gonna pull it tight along where we cut, get it underneath, hold on to the lamb, and make sure it drops on the floor. It almost always drops on the floor. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna repeat the same process on all of the bones for both racks. Now, uh, I'm gonna start adding the liquid components and then add in some brown sugar, some salt, salt and some pepper. pepper. I like a lot of pepper. Malt vinegar, olive, olive oil. oil. Every good marinade is just olive oil. Balsamic vinegar, Dijon mustard. All right, and I'm just whisking it all together. In the wise words of Chef Frank Proto, that needs salt. People complain about how much salt I use all the time. I'm Chef Frank, so I'm not gonna shy away from salt. Much better, okay. I would declare that to be whisked. Second one down. Let's tie it up. So a slit down and then slits along the back for a place for our string to sit, and then we're gonna just open this up just a little bit. This is how our crown gets formed. And by doing those little cuts, you'll see that it gives us that nice crown. So now I'm just gonna take my twine, tie it off nice and tight, and then we get our second piece of twine that we're gonna kinda go right under the bones. You'll see that the bones stand up a little more, but that is basically how we're gonna roast this crown roast off. What do you guys think? I'm sure it's delicious. <laughs> This is the easiest step. But I personally like to stab my meat before it goes into the bag. That helps the marinade soak into the meat a little bit. 
I'm gonna put all the uh, lamb chops into a bag, dump this in there, and I'm gonna maybe zhuzh it around with my hands a little bit just so it kind of really soaks in there. Easy peasy. When it comes to something like lamb that's really expensive, I tend to shy away from heavy marinades or heavy rubs. I don't want this to overpower the lamb, and I'm gonna make basically a salt and herb rub for it. I'm using herbs that accent the lamb, that go well with lamb, some thyme, some rosemary. Kosher salt, ground black pepper, and we're just gonna kinda whiz it up. Smells super fragrant, nice and earthy, and that's what we're gonna use on the lamb. There, so all of the loin chops are covered in the marinade for 30 minutes or as long as you want. These are gonna go sit in the fridge overnight. Now we're gonna get our crown roast ready to be roasted. I'm gonna take some Dijon mustard and rub it all over. Just a nice thin layer so that our salt and herb mixture will stick. And I'm just gonna go nice and fairly light, a little heavy on the inside on the fat, and we're gonna put it on our rack. One other thing we have to do before we put this in the oven is we have to cover the bones with foil so the bones don't burn. It's like arts and crafts with Chef Frank. My chops have been marinating for about half an hour and then I'm going to sear it in a cast iron pan. So these bad boys have been marinating for probably 24 hours overnight. And for this, I'm going to use a grill top. I've got my pan nice and hot and I'm just gonna add some olive oil here. Did I mean to put all that much? I think it's fine. Throw some oil on this and start throwing these onto the real top. Ooh. Yeah, that's the sound we're looking for. Cooking lamb in a cast iron pan is a great way to get a good sear and get a nice kind of crusty outside. Grilling the lamb gives it a beautiful smokiness that just complements the lamb. So either way, grilled, roasted, or sauteed in a pan, lamb is amazing. The key here is not to overcook your lamb. You wanna get it nice and pink in the middle. You don't want this to be brown and dry. I put way too much olive oil, <laughs> I'm so sorry. It'll be fine. It'll just be like a little deep fry. <laughs> in an ideal world, I am hoping to get these like around medium, medium rare. rare. on the lamb. So I wanna cook them around eight to 10 minutes, so like four to five minutes on each side, basically. I learned there's ways to test doneness of touching the meat by using your hands. If you go like this, and you touch this part, the different levels of your fingers indicate levels of doneness. So there's like rare, medium rare, medium well, and then like completely well done. It feels good, they feel nice and, you know, feel, feels about the same. This looks great, look at that. You see the grill lines? Perfect. I don't want to toot my own horn, but it smells great in here. Toot toot. This is gonna go into about a 425 to 450 degree oven for about 10 minutes just to kind of start the browning process. And then we'll lower it down to about 325, 350, until it hits an internal temperature of about 120, 125. Now, the hallmark of cooking meat, I feel like it's to let it rest. You don't touch it, you just let it sit. And while they rest, I'm gonna make my pan sauce. Now, because I put, frankly, way too much olive oil in earlier, uh, I am going to pour out a little bit of the fat that's in here right now. Yeah, that's a more reasonable amount of fat for this. And now we can make more delicious stuff. Uh, this is a peanut sauce. I had a peanut sauce once at a Thai restaurant and then realized it was actually really cool to cook with peanut butter. For our crown roast, I'm gonna make a sauce there, which is just herb-based mayonnaise. And the guests can put it on or not. The first thing I'm gonna do is pour roughly a cup of red wine in here. Woo! Any dry red wine will really work. I have a ton of fresh cilantro here. I only need about like a quarter of a cup and then the rest I will reserve for garnish. I'm gonna pretty much just kind of put everything in the pool. My anchovies go in, the capers are gonna go in, my tarragon vinegar. Now I didn't necessarily want to use tarragon the herb, but just to have a little backbone of flavor, that's why I used the tarragon vinegar. We're gonna put a little garlic, garlic in there. Again, I put garlic in just about everything. It was in the marinade, it's gonna be in the sauce as well. So one, two, do one more for good luck and the flavor, bang. Two tablespoons of lime juice. Pulse this real quick, and then add the rest of the stuff. So I would say that this has reduced enough. It's definitely thicker a little bit, and also there's less of it. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is add chicken broth. Oh yeah, and when I did that, I could see that the bottom of the pan is nice and clean, which means all the delicious lamb bits are in the sauce where we want them. Be delicious, be, be delicious. Uh, if you don't want to use raw egg yolks, don't use them. You can make a, a herb puree and use some prepared mayonnaise. I'm gonna take my dill, my chives as well, and then parsley, the same thing. I'm gonna add a nice pinch of salt in there, and I'm gonna just add a little water to kind of get this going, right? And then we turn it on. 
Tamp it down a little just to get the herbs rolling. Slowly add your oil. The more you cook it, the better it gets within reason. So we're just like chilling with it right now. Peanut sauce is heavy on the peanut butter. Doesn't get much better than that, really. I'm not sure that I would choose peanut butter for lamb. I would imagine it probably tastes pretty good, but it's really not where I as a chef would want to go with it. I've never heard of that, but I trust my compatriots. It's good, trust me, trust me it's good. Just, just trust me. Vegetable oil, a little bit of water, that cuts it a little bit, a little bit of soy sauce, brown sugar, again. Last but not least, sriracha. It's gonna add a little bit of a kick, but not too overpowering. Now, it's time to process. We're just gonna count down from 10 and then we're gonna call it done. 10, nine, eight. And that's it, it's that easy. Our sauce there. Look at that, nice and green. Come on, who wouldn't want that with their lamb? Look at it, beautiful. Three, two, one, sauce! <laughs> The sauce is done. Looks great, right? Our crown roast is out of the oven. We've made this crown roast, it looks gorgeous. So let's present it first and then we'll get into carving it. Uh, all right, first thing, let's reveal the lamb. Truly the lamb burgini of lamb. Now the goal here is to make this look real pretty. So. If Chef Frank is on this episode, I feel like I need to, to, to step the plating game up a little bit. I'm gonna take a big fat dollop of this sauce and kind of just smear it across the plate as I see so many chefs do. So now, and I'm just gonna go, like I said, down the line, uh, alternating which way the bones go. Plating is like a little bit stressful. <laughs> to finish this off, a light dusting of the peanuts. And last but not least, a couple little sprigs of cilantro. Bam. This is a grand salam. Ba-dum. I'm gonna take a little bit of my sauce and I'm gonna spread it on the plate so that it pops out underneath our crown roast. I'm gonna put this onto our platter and this is gonna go out to our guests like this. Drizzle my pan sauce over here. I might not be best at plating, but I am the best at eating <laughs> and I'm looking forward to eating this. And last but not least, parsley. And these are my shoulder lamb chops. And these are my lamb chops. And this is my lamb. I wanna eat this. I'm gonna plate it now. They gave me a fork and a knife, but we're not gonna use those. You know, this is why we French the bone. Let's taste this thing. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Wow, listen, even I, the person cooking this shoulder chop was concerned that it would be tough and it's not at all, it's super tender. The herbs and the seasoning don't overpower but they give us a nice background flavor. The sauce doesn't overpower either. It gives us a really good compliment to the lamb. It's lip smacking. <laughs> so there's a little bit of a kick but it's balanced by the fattiness and the the subtle sweetness of the peanut sauce. And I know, I know, I get it. Peanut butter sauce is weird, especially with something as delicate as lamb. But try it, I guarantee you'll like it, trust me. Lamb chops are so delicious and make a wonderful dinner. Let's see how each of our three chefs made theirs. Lamb is tender, finely greened meat with a very red color due to high amounts of myoglobin. The gamey flavor and odor associated with cooked lamb becomes more pronounced as the animal ages, which is why young lamb is so highly prized. Emily used lamb shoulder chops, which are a tougher cut because these chops include a combination of well-used muscles with a lot of connective tissue. They're from a primal cut towards the upper front of the animal and can be fairly large. Daniel used loin chops with the bone in. These are lean, tender, and delicious, and are from the center part of the animal, approximately three to four ounces each, with the attractive T-shaped bone that runs through the meat. They look like perfect miniature T-bones. 
Frank used a rack of lamb chined. The rib rack is the portion remaining after the removal of the shoulder, breast, and loin portions of the carcass. The chine bone, which is protruding edge of the vertebrae, is removed, exposing the lean meat between the ribs and the attached smaller feather bones. Frank Frenched his roast, a refined technique, but it has nothing to do with kissing. This means cutting away the intercostal meat between each rib bone and cleaning the bone of any sinew, exposing the white bones. Frenching rib bones made an elegant presentation while making it easier for guests to handle each piece of meat, something historically important to the French for whom this technique is named. And this is why we French our bones. Emily's marinade added flavor and helped to tenderize the portion of the meat that came in contact with the marinade, mostly from the addition of acidic mustard and balsamic vinegar. She marinated her meat for a brief 30 minutes. This will add some seasoning, but won't reach the interior portion of the meat. Marinades need time to work. Daniel also used a marinade for his lamb chops. He added malt vinegar and brown sugar to balance sweet, sour, and salty. The sugar caramelizes and also participates in Maillard browning, adding to the roasted, toasted, and complex sweetness to his lamb chops. Marinating is super easy. That's why I think it's a step that you shouldn't skip. Daniel poked the meat so that the marinade seeped into the interior portions, allowing it to absorb more of those flavors. Poking also disrupts some of the connective tissue in the meat. But since Daniel used a very tender cut, it wasn't necessary. Frank used traditional herbs and mustard as a rub prior to roasting. A rub on meat without any length of time for penetration or fermentation simply seasons the meat like the marinade that Emily used. Mustard contains mucilage, a natural emulsifier that helps the rub adhere to the meat even better and formed a crunchy, savory, and herbal crust or bark during roasting as moisture was evaporated. All three chefs cooked their chops to perfection using different methods, but they all noted the importance of resting the meat prior to serving. If you don't let it rest, when you cut into it, it's gonna bleed everywhere. Slightly lower than roasting temperatures allow for an increase in water holding capacity, thereby maintaining a juicy lamb that will impress your guests. Next time you're in the mood to serve lamb for a special dinner, we hope you'll take some of these tips from our three wonderful chefs.